Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 72. Woo! So first, before we get into today's topics, well I guess introductions are in order. This is Eric Morf, this is your first time ever watching, a uh, best friend and uh, podcast extraordinaire at this point. Then obviously you're hosted with the most of you guys all know me, you hear me in every single video, Nathaniel Ruffle Jantz. Uh, before we get into the topics today, I thought it might be cool to point out that uh, we have a lot more viewers the last two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that interesting? Well, yeah. I know we pointed it out last week. But it the happened subs. It happened again. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're, we're still uh, And we're it's still, not just the subs. Going. It's not just the subs that are continuing to go right. high. Viewership of this podcast is seemingly at an all-time high two weeks in a row. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. Almost 2,000 views per episode for the past two weeks. We're not quite. Uh, technically at 2,000 if we count audio listens yeah. as their own thing, yeah. which Wait. they usually are their yes. own thing. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It's just yeah, people, yeah. Like, yeah, people no, subscribe to us on iTunes. I know, and everything. I know. So it, it's actually kind of cool because it's the, probably the first time in – Man, six months maybe that we've actually noticed the podcast is growing in viewership. Woo! Which is awesome because I love this podcast. And for those who don't know, the Nintendo Prime podcast is basically the foundation of Nintendo Prime. Literally one of the very first pieces of content we ever created. Mm-hmm. Uh, ongoing, fully fan funded and supported by Patreon. Uh, never, and because of that, we have the luxury of not really caring how much viewership it gets, right? Like, oh man, if it gets two thousand, great. If it only gets a hundred, great. It doesn't matter. It's a it's a fully fan funded venture, but it's still really cool to see us grow and expand because this is my favorite piece of content we make every week. Whether it's just Eric and I, whether Darren pops in, whether we have special guests on, you know, we've had Mark in the past and two Holmes as our Patreon backers. Um, or mm-hmm. if we have anyone on, other YouTubers yeah. even, uh, we've had other YouTubers on, like. It, it's all just really fun and cool because if you guys don't can't tell, I like the conversation. The reason you guys see me down in the comment section on so many videos conversing with you guys is that's one of my favorite aspects of video games. Yes, obviously playing the games is amazing. That's like priority one. But I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber because I like discussing these things. Mm-hmm. And I mean mm-hmm. actually discussing, not just me talking into a mic and you guys listening. I mean well, having conversations. You do a lot of that. But <laughs> yeah. But I mean like having conversations. That's why I go down in the comment section. That's why we have yeah, a podcast. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I, I read. I don't comment. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you comment. I do. I do. Occasionally. Yeah. He, uh, he's gotten better over, over time, especially now that he's actually in the Switch ecosystem. Yeah. So he, yeah. he's a little more... I don't know, knowledgeable, is that even the right word? Uh, Self-aware of what's happening, I guess. Um, Why not? So speaking of Switch, our first topic... (laughs) Good segue. (laughs) First topic deals with how uh, Nintendo has moved 4.5 million Switches in Japan. This was according to Media Create and Famitsu. So the two people that report different, you know, usually slightly variated numbers... Uh, in Japan are basically both agreeing that it has moved over 4.5 million units lifetime to date. Uh, it, remember, it did release worldwide on March of last year, so everyone got it at the same time. Uh, time zone differences, of course. Uh, PS4 has sold around 6.8 million units so far lifetime to date in Japan. 3DS has sold over 24 million units lifetime to date. And the Vita is around 5.8 million units lifetime to date. And I brought up those other numbers uh, because I think it's interesting just to start off with the idea that Switch isn't even two years in, and it's almost sold as much as the PlayStation 4. Uh, it is almost outsold Vita, and it is definitely on pace to match or pass 3DS. That's crazy. Like, that is insane. That is when you, when you think insane. about how well Switch is doing, it, it just steadily and, holds on to that number one slot and sells between 40,000 and 50,000 units every single week, regardless of what games come out. Mm-hmm. Which you can view as a bad thing because it means it's not getting a boost when new games come out, but it's also a great thing because it means it's also not dipping either. It's mm-hmm. just staying at the same every week, regardless of what happens, which is really cool. That creates consistency. Yeah. You're not, you're not looking at huge dips. You just bring out a game. Okay, it didn't really bump the numbers that much. Does it matter because it helps maintain that consistent sales every week? Like To give you an idea, I didn't put it on here. I know this just from, from a video I made. Nintendo owned eight of the top 10 software sales charts, all for Switch. Including the number one spot, Mario Tennis Wack. Aces, two weeks in a row. Um, huh. Dang. Yeah. So like it, it, it's awesome to see this kind of success. Uh, for Switch in Japan. Now, here is where we get into a very interesting conversation, though. 
So Switch isn't just doing well in Japan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, after I, I, I'm guessing all these numbers were just Japan's numbers. Yes, those okay, are just. That's Japan's, what I, fi- yeah. I figured. But yep. clarify for. So, Switch sales, according to GameStop, doubled in the week after E3, according to well GameStop themselves, and it says, however, Nintendo stock in the past month has dipped a total of thirty percent or more. So stockholders are not feeling the love of Nintendo, apparently, or mm-hmm. predicting there's not going to be a good holiday, even though Pokemon and Smash Bros. are there, and mm-hmm. the Switch isn't dipping in sales, and it's still on pace to sell 20 million units. I, I mean, oh, sorry, technically it's on pace to sell like 17 million, but that's assuming that the sales today just stay this way and don't actually increase with Smash and Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, like Smash like, yeah. is going to be on the market for four months of those sales. Pokemon's yeah. going to be on the yeah. uh, for five months of those fiscal sales. Like, it's going to increase numbers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those two games alone will probably move to 20 million units on their own. Let's just be honest. Yeah. Um. So. The thing I, I see here is what is what concern could they possibly have? Because what is was stated from uh, Nikkei, the uh, newspaper in Japan, is that essentially stockholders uh, aren't impressed by the lineup. Mm-hmm. That's which, what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah. And then that's fine. That's opinions. Mm-hmm. But then they also said due to the sluggish performance of Switch. What part of these numbers it's seems sluggish. sluggish? Being the number one selling unit in your home country, the number two How? selling unit in the United States, and the number one selling SKU in the United States, and eight of the top ten in Japan, and having bestsellers every month in the United States is huh. sluggish. How long has the PS4 been out? A long time. That's but and but that's actually a point against Nintendo. PlayStation 4 has been on a long time, and while Nintendo's dominating in Japan, Nintendo has a handheld. I know it's a home console, but it's a handheld, which right. does better in Japan than home console, so it right. should also sell PlayStation 4. Yeah. Whereas in the United States, despite the fact that the PlayStation 4 has been out for, what, five years now? The Switch is only in year two and being outsold by PlayStation 4 month to month. So, okay, it's kind of, it's kind of a, you could see some concern there, but Sony stock is dropping too. So it's not just Nintendo. Sony's it, doing phenomenally well. I don't know. The is it just PlayStation? How's doing Microsoft doing, stock wise? I have no idea. But Microsoft, most of their money is nothing to do with oh, gaming. Oh, so right, 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 right. What, yeah. what their stock's doing doesn't really matter for Xbox. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Investors if, like, don't I'm just react wondering, to Xbox. I'm just wondering if it's not a like a industry wide drop well, right now. In Japan, a lot of companies in Japan have been dipping, but Nintendo's been one of the worst. Right. Which doesn't make any sense considering the capital they have, the revenue they have coming in, and how popular their st- current stuff is. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Reggie fils if for people to think, oh, well, that's Switch. Reggie fils just put out there that in this first part of the year, 3DS sales have risen by 10%. So even 3DS <laughs> is selling better than last yeah. year. Yeah. So Wait, everything what? is looking up. It. But investors are like, the- yeah, but it's going to tank this holiday when Smash and Pokemon arrive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could understand them being tepid about the 3DS because nothing sure, has but been. No one's looking at. You can't be looking cares. at the 3DS for investment. Oh, right, 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 right. No, no, no. I know, but I'm saying that I can see them like, being. Why is it a seller's tepid about market that, now? But here's the thing: the best time to sell your stock is when you're peaking. Mm-hmm. When Nintendo was peaking after Pokemon Go, excellent time to sell your stock. Mm-hmm. Sell, 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 sell to buyer's market. Sell that like crazy. Get all the money you can. But their stock is tanking now, well, relatively tanking. It's still <laughs> worth a lot of money. <laughs> right. um, but drop 30%, now would not be the time to sell because the only reason you would sell now is because you are determining that it's going to keep dropping mm-hmm. and it's never going to recover, at least not within the next year. Why would you sell now? Like, how, what part makes makes you think when Pokemon lands, it ain't going to just skyrocket again? Why would you sell now? Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I can understand selling a little bit before and after E3 if you didn't believe in it, mm-hmm. but why continue to sell as the as the value keeps dropping? It doesn't make any sense. And the value is dropping because they're selling. The more you sell, yeah, the lower right. the value gets. Yeah. So it's like, I why? I, yeah. You're, so they're not gonna. So Pokemon and Smash can't isn't good enough. I mean, I, I I will give it that 2017 to me had four system sellers. Right. 
What are those four system sellers? Odyssey, Breath of the Wild. Oh, God. So it's two multiplayer games I play all the time. Oh, Splatoon. And... One's from Wii U. Oh, God. Uh, I don't remember. Vols, one. Vols from Racing. Yeah. Mario Kart. There right. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mario right, Kart's right, like the right, second right. best-selling yeah, yeah. game on the yeah, platform. Right, right. So, like, all of the best-selling games on the platform right there. So, yes, comparatively to this year, Nintendo has not released four system sellers. They haven't released any system seller yet. Arguably, they won't have a system seller until Pokemon. Right. And Smash. Yes. Now, I will tell you this. Pokemon and Smash's impact this holiday season is going to be massively bigger than Odyssey and Xenoblade 2. And that's saying something because Odyssey had a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Pokemon sells way more than Mario games do. Mm-hmm. And Smash alone is going to destroy whatever sales Xenoblade had. So the combined sales of those two games alone are going to ensure Nintendo sells probably 10 million Switches just over November no. to January. Uh, I suppose with Mario Kart in there, it's kind of unfair. Um, I was going to say, between Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, and um, Splatoon, how do you think those three stack up to just against the two coming out now? Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, Splatoon? Yeah. Um, Advantage to last year. Because... For sales-wise? Yeah, sales-wise, because Splatoon's huge. Mm -hmm. I think people underestimate Splatoon. Mm -hmm. Because the first game, you know... Well, the first game only sold, you know, five five million or whatever. It's like on Wii U on a platform that, that only would, sold nobody. thirteen million <laughs> units. Yeah. Do you know how well that would have sold that on something rate, like Wii? That attach rate is <laughs> monstrous. <laughs> if you want to look at it, oh, the attach rate, it could be a fifty million on Wii if you want to base it on attach rate. Like, yeah. like it is. It, it outsold Splatoon one. It was super super fast. It's still like in Japan, it was number three this last week. Oh jeez. Number three. Okay. Yeah. And it was behind Mario Tennis Aces, which just came out a, like a right. week ago. Right. And then a brand new game that came out on PlayStation 4 this week. So it was behind yeah. a brand new game. Two brand and then, new games. And then, and then one game that's been out for a couple weeks. So a oh, couple yeah. weeks, uh, well, brand new s- game. You still bra- pretty well, much count I know, but, but, Aces so, as a brand new A couple game. weeks, brand new game this yeah. week, Splatoon from over a year ago. Like, I'm sorry, <laughs> okay. yeah. Splatoon 2 is a massive deal. It's yeah. huge. It's on no par with Smash Bros. It might no even sell it. more than Smash Bros. If I'm being honest. Yeah. And I'm not trying. This is not me dissing oh, oh. Smash Bros. <laughs> All you Smash fans out there, I understand Smash is amazing. I'm not questioning its greatness. But Splatoon 2, I feel like is, if you look at the sales numbers, it's on, like right there with what the Smash series sells. Mm-hmm. So like that's a system seller, clearly a system seller. Look at it. look. I mean, just in Japan alone, clearly, clearly a system seller. Yeah. And then. Mario Kart, which has always been a system seller. A, a, a top-tier 3D Mario game, always been a system seller. And the arguably the best Zelda game of all time, system seller. Yeah. And it was the most hyped game of pretty much of all of last year. And that's saying something because Odyssey was on that year. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, huh. and, and that's like, not even just Odyssey. Horizon Zero Dawn and all those great games right, from right. PlayStation as well. Like, I'm... Was, was 2017 <sighs> just a better overall game year? Well, see, that's a subjective thing, though. Right. Some people will argue that if you weren't in the Zelda, you weren't in the Mario, and you didn't care about Splatoon, and then you don't care about Mario Kart, you're like, well, well, yeah, if you don't care, if you don't care 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 about about the four biggest titles in Nintendo, then you probably don't care about Nintendo. Well, not necessarily, because you can be not in those games and still have Smash, still have Pikmin, still have Metroid. Yeah. Like, there's other things. Like, Nintendo has a zillion franchises. Nah. So you don't have to be in the Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon, even, to be a fan of Nintendo. It's very rare to find a fan of Nintendo that's not into at least one of those things. Right. But it happens, because Nintendo does have a lot of cool stuff. Especially, I got 3DS. There's a lot of cool Japanese stuff going on. I know people who have bought Switch for not even for Nintendo. They bought it for indie games. Yeah, yeah. Because well, it's well, one of the best of indie game platform there is. I mean, Hollow Knight just came out absolutely fantastic. Like, there's there's all these great indie games coming out all the time. Mm-hmm. So, I'm just... Right. I, I You know, I made a video about this, and I, 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 I talked about perception a little bit. That... I, Sometimes the, perception doesn't match reality. <laughs> and I know I read down in the uh, the comments that they were going to turn into a drinking game and drink every time you said perception in that video, apparently. Perception. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because it, it's a perception is, oh, a, right. is a lot. No, no, for sure. It means a lot. It does. Uh, especially when it comes to investing. and Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to figure out what investors are doing when they buy and sell stock is they're looking at future evaluations. They're trying to predict what the stock is going to do 
at a period they would like to sell it at in the future. So Mm -hmm. as an example, if I bought stock in Nintendo today, uh, usually when you buy stock, by the way, you're not, it's not a forever kind of thing. Um, unless you're trying to keep it in the family or something. Unless you're like buying stock of the Packers. (laughs) It's because it's not worth anything. I know. <laughs> hey, it's uh, definitely worth something. I mean, you could probably sell it. I, see, I think I've seen some of it on eBay. So you can yeah. buy the certificate, but yeah. it's not worth anything. Your name's not on it. Yeah, so you can't <laughs> do anything with it. You can't even go to the meetings because no. you don't you have You don't own the right stock, ID. yeah. You just, whatever, I'm going to wait it out. I own the, I own the like, piece of paper that says that stock. Says, that says stock. Anyways, um, but how stock generally works is you invest into it, and then you pull out at some point. That that's that's the general the general goal is to put money in the stock market and make more out of it than you put in. Um, this is actually how it, it might sound crazy. To, I don't know if foreigners do it this way, but this is pretty much how all retirement accounts work in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Is you literally are just throwing money at the stock market and you could lose everything. Mm-hmm. Usually you won't lose everything, especially if you put it. Well, what what ends up happening is most people put it in reliable stock. So reliable stock would be something like Google. Nintendo, McDonald's, companies that aren't going to go anywhere. So you know no matter what, even if you end up not getting your full value back of what you put in, you're going to get a significant chunk of it. Mm-hmm. You end up putting $3 million worth of money into it throughout the course of your life. Maybe you only get 2.8 back, so you actually lost money on the whole ordeal. But typically, depending on where you work at the company, you end up making money anyways because the company also invests for mm-hmm. like extra money on top. Mm-hmm. So no matter what, you generally come ahead just because of that. But that's that's what a lot of people do. And then there's people who do a bunch of that, and then they also have their the, the, their side deal where the like we're gonna take a bet like on dangerous stock, mm-hmm. not necessarily like so dangerous they're gonna lose all their money, but like taking a chance on a company they hope will take off. Like a startup company. Like thing. a startup or e- even like Nintendo, as an example. Right now they're on a low. So mm-hmm. if I really want to make a bunch of money, it, it might be good to buy a bunch of stock now and then wait for it to peak this holiday and sell then. That's the way I would look at it as someone that, man, if I bought you know 100 shares of Nintendo right now, I know it's going to peak at Pokemon and Smash. Mm-hmm. I know this. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to sell. Mm-hmm. But that's not the way investors look at it. it. It's really, really weird how these full-time investors do it where they pretty much make all their money on the stock market. This is what they do. Mm-hmm. They play the stock market. It's crazy. So what will happen is, yeah, it's a buyer. Technically, right now, it's a buyer's market because all the stock is selling. They're sell, sell, selling, sell, sell, selling. Mm-hmm. So the people who are buying the stock right now, um, for some reason, when the stock peaks this holiday – they won't sell it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they're waiting for, but then that's when they should sell it. And then the stock should, should go down in value because they mm-hmm. got to get rid of it at that high point. But that's not what they do. And I don't know why I haven't figured out why they don't, but it, it, it's weird. Like I have this theory that, you know, with this stock valuation, what's happening is that investors in Nintendo are slowly being turned over to gamers Remember the investors meeting Q&A we did? Yeah. How stupid those questions were? Uh-huh. Those are the people buying Nintendo stock, and they just sound like gamers. They don't sound like business people. So ga- so what's happening, I think, and I don't, I don't have any other, I don't know any factual evidence yeah, no, for this. Not at all. Beyond the fact that this is tanking for no reason, is that even though the facts show Nintendo is highly profitable and doing mm-hmm. extremely well and set to blow up this year, Mm-hmm. Despite the fact they only have two system sellers versus four last year, they're still set to blow up because those system sellers were so good last year. They've been carrying the Switch for mm-hmm. six months. So, well, like speaking of carrying, uh, my friend Kyle, who's was up from Iowa, and um, he's like, "Hey, do you have a Switch, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Do you have Breath of the Wild? I'm like, "Yeah." He started playing. I, I'm. He may have been hooked. <laughs> so <laughs> not yes. hard to get hooked. Like no, me. no, it's really not. But he <laughs> may he be hooked. Back. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I don't know. I haven't been home to check to see if my switch is still at home. <laughs> Little I know, it's in Iowa. Yeah, right. So my, as I said, my my theory is that gamers have been buying the stock up over the years. Mm-hmm. And we've gotten to this point that gamers are injecting their feelings into the valuation of the stock. And what I mean by that is they gamers are very up. volatile. They don't see a lineup. Yeah. So, so basically they're like, I, I wasn't impressed by E3. I'm selling my stock. Yeah. Like, but that's not how investing works. Mm-hmm. You you need to, like, <laughs> yes, you might not be impressed by E3, but look at the facts. Are you mm-hmm. looking at the sales? GameStop doubled in sales. Switch is number one all over Japan. Damn. 
We still haven't had Smash and Pokemon yet. Yeah, man. And why the well, why do they double in sales? Because of Smash and Pokemon. Mm-hmm. But because you weren't impressed by their E three lineup, sell, 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 sell. Why? Well, when okay. the f- it'd be different if you weren't impressed by the E three lineup and the sales were dipping. Honestly, sales peaking. Yeah. Despite you not being impressed, because that guess what? The most of the world does not base what they're going to buy on what you personally feel was a bad E three. Right. In fact, GameStop came out to say, and I don't have this written down, so I'm paraphrasing, that not only was Nintendo obviously um, doubling their sales of Switch and all that stuff, that Nintendo had the most chatter coming out of E3 as well. Hmm. So we're talking most amount of tweets, most amount of social media buzz, and this is supposed to be off a bad E3. So a bad E3 for Nintendo um, in sure. this generation is still a good E3, is basically yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, right. And I, I'm someone that didn't think E3 was all that impressive, but you know what? Smash and Pokemon are that big of a deal. Yes. There's a reason it was a four and a half hour wait to play five minutes of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Mm-hmm. Because that's, I think you're supposed to get eight, but whatever. <laughs> because that is how big of a deal that game is. Yeah. Even if you think it's stupid, trust me, that game is going to sell like gangbusters. Mm hmm. So is Smash. There's a reason half the booth is dedicated to Smash. Mm-hmm. There's a reason the Smash line was winding and winding like crazy in the back. Although it did go fairly quickly from. Well, yeah, it was because that, a lot of that was for the casual play line. Right. They, they're just getting people yeah. crazy in the casual yeah. line. Competitive line, you get all serious. There's yeah. less stations. You got to yeah. slow it down. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, it's it's just it's very interesting to me to see things go this route. Um, I mean, do you have any theories or thoughts? Like, mine's just that gamers are buying stock and that gamers don't know how to invest. Honestly, I agree. <laughs> I, that's it. I don't know what else to say. I, I mean, those are some pretty decent theories. I, I was thinking. Remember, we are not professional stock market analysts. Uh, yes. I don't. Do you have a retirement account? I do. Yeah. See, I don't anymore. I used to pulled all my money out after I had kids because ah, oh, they're expensive. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No. I, I didn't have that much put away anyways at that point. But um, eventually, see, that's, you know, I, I always tell this story. How do I know when I made it on YouTube? Is it when I'm paying my bills with YouTube money? Well, I'm already doing that. Is it when yeah. I is it when I uh, make a comfortable living? Well, sure. But what constitutes a comfortable living? Oh, okay, well, this amount of money, then I can live comfortably. I think what really constitutes a comfortable living is when I'm actually putting money in a retirement account. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think, I think that's when I know I've made it. When go. I can afford to be like, yeah, you know what? This $500 a month, I don't need that. That can yeah. go in retirement. Why not? I can actually have a 401k. Hey, why not? <laughs> it's like, huh. I should probably think about that someday. I am 32. I've got, what, maybe 40 good years of work left yeah. in me? <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. zero put away. I'm so prepared, especially when welfare and social, and what social, security, social security are gone. going to be there. Oh, yeah, so man. I have no way to uh, – like, come on, kids. When you're watching this video 40 years from now, anyway. <laughs> Anyways. Remember. I'll, I'll be okay. I'll, I'll be okay. I believe I, – I, I have always said I believe in living in the moment. Mm-hmm. So – <laughs> the problem with living in the moment is that 40 years from now, I could be screwed. Uh, hey, don't worry. I'll be the the 90-year-old making YouTube videos, even though YouTube's not a thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Back in my day, we made YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I kidding? Here, Here's the thing. I'm not retiring. Let's be honest. I'm going to be making YouTube videos until I'm 100, even if YouTube doesn't even exist anymore. I'm still gonna be making videos and trying to upload to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> your your gravestone's gonna have reconnecting in three, two, one, and then an <laughs> error message underneath error, it. Error. If I even remember how to have a website at that yeah, point. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, it's just we're not professionals when it comes to this. We're just two talking heads over here, yep. throwing opinions around. I just yeah. after uh, if you guys don't know, what we're talking about the investors meeting. Go watch uh, or go listen to last week's episode. Yeah. Um, it was bad. It was. It was one it was of funny. the worst investor meeting Q and As I've ever seen in my life, and that's what makes me be like, "Well, of course, those are the people selling their stock because they're <laughs> idiots. They don't understand how <laughs> Please, business works." Sell like, your stock. like I'm, a, I'm just a gamer. Let's be honest. I know I'm a YouTuber, but I'm literally just a gamer, like all of you guys, and I'm not even that stupid to ask those kind of questions at an investors meeting. You're at an investors meeting. Every question you ask should be pointed towards well, how is this affecting your revenue. Yes. 
and in your stock value. Yes. And to solve all your questions are, can I get this? Can I get that? This is a great this building. Is, this <laughs> with, is a with, great with building. Well with well-kept grass. Yeah, not even the Nintendo building. So you're not even complimenting Nintendo. It's yeah. like, what? Well, <laughs> right. Anyways. Yes. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next topic. Topic two. Yeah. Topic two. So, Kimishima, who, by the way, technically doesn't work at Nintendo anymore. Well, I shouldn't say that. He has stepped down. He might still be on, I think, as an advisor, but he doesn't have an official position anymore. Um, okay. So basically, he's retired. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's weird that we're even paying attention to what he says then at this point. But then yeah. again, he was literally just Every- leading Nintendo until this meeting when Furukawa got the vote and it was, I mean, 96% approval rating for him to be CEO or something like that. <laughs> um, it's whatever. You're going to trust what Nintendo says uh, until honestly, the guy Honestly, how, how long was he... Kimishima? Yeah. How long is he ahead of Nintendo for? Ah, oh, man. A while? No. When it, he took over when Satoru Wada died. Oh, right. So yeah. a couple years. And he's old. Right. I mean, he's old. He's. he's but he's, he's been with the, He's been with the company, though, for I think he's, is he a young, long he might while. He's slightly though, right? younger than Miyamoto, even. Miyamoto's really old. I know he doesn't look because he's always smiling all the time, but Miyamoto's. He's ancient, man. Yeah. Um, but no, he's been with the company for a long time. Yes. Too, though. yes. So. When this guy talks, people listen, even if yeah. he doesn't technically have a title. And he knows he's been he's running the about. company, so if he, he knows what's going on. <laughs> he knows what's going on. Um, so he says that Nintendo hasn't unveiled their full fall lineup yet. And this was in response to, obviously, concerns about the stock dropping and, and, and investors not being impressed with the lineup. Um, and they said they're going to, they're going, they will reveal it later. Well, obviously, if it's not unveiled yet, they're going to mm-hmm. reveal it all later. Um but here's what we know basically about the fall lineup. We know that there's going to be NBA 2K. Mm-hmm. Those Mega Man 11. We know about, obviously, about, uh, I don't even know. I, I guess maybe Pokemon might fall into fall. I know November you're getting into winter territory, but holiday you might consider that. Yeah. And yeah. maybe, I don't think, Smash Bros. is probably the one. Definitely winter. That's in December. Yes. Um, but, you know, yeah, that doesn't sound that great on paper. No, it, it basically really doesn't. sounds like yeah. you end with one big game. And you got a couple ringers in there. Yeah. Um, not even a couple ringers. I mean, I don't know. To me, NBA 2K19 is a ringer. Especially with Giannis on the Giannis. cover. Giannis. Giannis. Oh, everyone's going to get Legendary Edition. You go get your LeBron Legendary Edition. Yeah. I'm getting no. Giannis. On a tumbo, baby. Just like I can't wait for his basketball shoes to come out. Because that's when I'm finally replacing my high school ones. The Greek freak. It took me this long to finally replace them because a Milwaukee Bucks player has a shoe deal. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and it's not a shoe deal to wear somebody else's shoes. He gets his own. So I'm actually going to finally get new basketball shoes. Well, wait, what, what brand Someday. did he go with? What? What brand did he get him? Yeah, it's with Nike. Oh, nice. Okay. Which is which is perfect for me because they make the right kind of thing that fit my ankles. So. Right, right. So it, it, hopefully, I don't know. Yeah, right, right. These are new shoes. These are new For some odd no, reason. The low tops with yeah. wide, with yeah. wide ankle. Yeah. yeah, which is exactly what you want to wear when you're yeah, playing basketball. Now you don't need ankle support. Wait, who, who, wore, who wore low tops in the game? Was that Steph? In yeah, the one game? I think, I think Steph did, yeah. Just for the heck of it? Yeah. Because it was his shoes or something and like that? And he's the one who's got ankle issues yeah, all I know. the time. I don't know. Well, I mean, you can you can still brace it up, of course, yeah. uh, or tape or whatever. Yeah. Anyways, okay. um, so here's here's the thing. What do we want to see this fall that isn't announced yet? Because at this point, I don't think there's any major major games. Like they're not going to say, "Oh, Metro Prime Four is dropping this fall." Oh, right. Obviously. Or Bayonetta out of three is dropping and, this fall. Yeah, right. But what games I, could they announce that are more like? I keep thinking more like a Kirby Star Allies kind of thing. Like we, games we that are going yeah. to perform well but aren't system sellers but can fill in that lineup. Or we talk about mm-hmm. third-party games. Are mm-hmm. we going to get surprised? Call of Duty's coming in. Like, hasn't been announced. Maybe that's because they're holding it for a surprise. Maybe. So what What do you think is going to happen? What What's filling out this fall lineup? I I honestly don't know. I well, mean, we know, we, like know Yoshi, we know Yoshi's pushed. Yep. Which... That's one I would have passed right away thought, if yeah. it wasn't right, pushed. Yeah. Right. Um, God, it really wouldn't surprise me if we got a, a uh, Call of Duty or a Battlefield. Well, I feel like there's got to be one more. Well, Dark Souls Remastered technically has never released it on Switch yet. That's could, probably one yeah, that's going to drop in that's there. That's definitely possible. But that's one we know is coming, kind of, sort of. I guess we don't know if it's dropping fall. It's still just a it's just been announced. So, September-ish, yeah, I think it's yeah. going to come. But... I, Besides that, I feel like there's got at least just, one third party game that, that is being a surprise. I hope it's Madden. Well, right. <laughs> I, I do too. But it's not going it's to not be. It's not going to be. 
I keep hope of. Oh, I forgot. I guess FIFA's in there too for yes. this fall. Can't yes. forget FIFA. I forgot FIFA 19 is coming. Right, right. Um, Which is not a bad game. So, but, uh, God, I just I don't know. I can't. I, my only guess, and I'm just throwing this out in the wind because I know the game's done, and I'm going to keep saying it until they release it, <laughs> is Pikmin 4. Oh. Wait, the game's Mi- done? Mi- Miyamoto said that Pikmin 4 was complete in 2015. Oh, jeez. And what? the way I figured it is they were waiting for a good time to release it on Wii U. Well, there was never a good, good time because Wii, Wii U was terrible yeah. in terms of sales. So, so they're well. like, oh, and the new Switch was coming. So it's like, oh, we'll save it for Switch. And they're like, well, look at all these big games. We got Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. We got, we got, po- like, let's find its own window. I think, like, September-ish is kind of a good window for it. Yeah, yeah. You drop it in September, and you are clear and free, because there's, I don't think Nintendo has any game in August either. In August and September, they, they have, like, here, nothing. Here comes an Animal Crossing. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't, uh, yeah, probably that, not. Thing, Animal Crossing is such a sy- system. So, like, oh, I, know. I don't know if you guys understand how big, like, go look at the sales of 3DS bump when Animal Crossing New Leaf came out. Like, yeah, mm, Animal Crossing is a system seller. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I it might even be up in the Pokemon tier for system sellers at this point. Do we know when Monster Hunter is coming out? Monster Hunter Generations. Oh, that's a good question. Gonna, that I'll, could be. I'm gonna look that up. Monster Hunter Generations. That could be uh, something that I don't know if it's got a release date yet. That could drop. It, in it there does have a release. It date. does. Okay. Yes, I thought it was this summer, but I'm gonna double check on that. Maybe that's the beginning of fall. I'm sorry, Generations Ultimate you got to put in? Just yes, because. Because you got to throw the ultimate on yes. it for some reason. Well, it's like the new. Um, Okay. I don't care about the 3DS version. Switch. Release date. Release date. <laughs> okay. Official website. Sure, why not? Even though it probably won't have anything of any sort of anything on it. Mm-hmm. August 28th. So that would August be fall. 20th. Okay, yeah. So, oh, that, is that summer? I think August is still considered part of summer. Oh, I don't know. I honestly it, don't is know. Is it? I, I think I, I think I think fall is basically uh, September through November, mm-hmm. if I remember right. And then December through January, and then February. December through February, I think is considered winter. At least that should be here. <laughs> right here. Spring yeah. starts in April, isn't it? March. Is it no, March? March. I'm not one hundred percent sure. I mean, we have snow until June, so. <laughs> well, March, April, May, and then June, July, August would be summer. Yeah, yeah. June, July, August is always summer. So, so yeah. So, so I guess it's yeah. still so technically te- summer. Technically, that's a summer game, even though it's almost at the beginning of fall. Yeah. And it's a <laughs> game we know, and we have a release date for, so they can't be talking about that. Yeah. Um. Does um. What the hell did we play? At Overcooked two. No. Yeah, well, but does that have an over- uh, release date? Yeah, yet? it's the summer Kay. too. Um. What the hell is it? Battle for Atlas? Starlink? Does that have a release date yet? Yeah. That's November. Well, it's, isn't I it? mean, th- the thing is, is we know about these games. So it's, yeah, it's, I it's, know. The only thing would be, oh, hey, g- by the way, the release date got moved up mm-hmm. or back or whatnot, or depending. Yeah, October 16th. So that's fall. Okay. Yeah. But that's still a known game. I feel like the it's a lot month of these games are. I feel like a lot of these, if it's going to be a game that they haven't unau- unveiled, it's an unveiled game. So it's not, you know, it's not any of these. I don't, I honestly don't know. Because they pushed Fire Emblem to 2019. Yep. So. Uh, Unless they lied about it. Yeah. I mean. Lied about but, Yoshi on their website at 2019. It's a typo because they never technically said that Yoshi was delayed. It just says on their website 2019. Yes. Could be a typo. Yes. To be fair. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, one of the when one of your biggest releases this fall is just DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles Two. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, what else is there going on here besides mm-hmm. Pokemon and besides Starlink? I'm just trying to think of other like Nintendo IP that could be, like like that the kind of niche genre yeah. fits right in there. Yeah, I mean, maybe a Brain Age is coming out. We haven't seen Brain Age in a while. Super Mario Party. When does that come? Oh, uh, but that's a, have, that's an unveiled game. But does it have game, a release though? date though? But that is an unveiled game though. Yeah, but it does have a release date. I don't know. If it doesn't have a release date, that could be part of the fall lineup. October 5th. Okay. So that has a release date. That is fall. Yeah. Forgot about that, Super Mario Party. I'm actually excited yeah. for that one. You know why I'm most excited for it? Because we live stream. Yeah. And, that's, uh, and as I was saying in, on my birthday live stream, you, me, and Yulia can actually stream that game together. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think it is online play, so we can even grab one other, maybe a Patreon backer out there. Ooh. 
and have a, oh, a four-way. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's Mario Party, baby. Uh, that's what I'm excited about. I love Mario Party for multiplayer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I just... I, the only thing I could think of would be like an Animal Crossing or, a, or you, like you said, Pikmin or... What? I, the more Wii U ports? Yeah, probably. Another Zelda port. Then you can bring in Twilight Princess and HD over? Yeah. Oh, you it. know what? I did think uh, it didn't happen, but I thought they might announce the Skyward Sword HD at E3. E3. I know, they could have announced did. it at a future direct. Yeah. yeah. That could be a fall game. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, I mean, but I, again, port. Like, is that yeah. really. They're just going to fill you with more ports? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but it, I'd it, buy it. But well, the thing, I'd the thing buy is, it, is but if the what are the what were the bigger games on the Wii U that could be still could, ported? Still ported that could be decent games. Zombie on the U. Switch? It already got ported to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, so why not bring it to Switch? Right. Um, let me see. The Wonderful 101. That could, yeah. I don't know if that'll sell well, but then again, all these indie games are selling well, so maybe it's a good time to bring it over. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's still new Super Mario Brothers. You. You never know. They could be Mario, Mario Maker. Maker. Mario Maker. Or Mario, Mario Maker, Maker 2, too. Yeah. That would be I fair. That would be very interesting. A Mario Maker might actually round out that lineup nice. Yeah. If you do a Mario Maker with the Mario Party, Starlink, and Pokemon, that's and pretty then, killer lineup yeah. for the fall. Yeah. I just I, I don't know. I don't. It feels like there's not a lot of games, but there is. And the sad part is, is once these games are announced, if they're announced, we're gonna be like, how did we not think of these? <laughs> what is happening? Oh, yeah, I for, kind of forgot about that. You guys, let me know what you guys think is gonna be in this lineup down in the comments. Um, let's move mm-hmm. on to our third topic. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how long this one's gonna last. I just wanted to bring it up because I think this it's is funny. This is funny. So. You guys know Smash fans can be a little crazy, right? Everyone knows how crazy Smash fans get. Um, let's get into a couple things that show examples of uh, how crazy fans get, and then we'll we'll put it on a scale. So this is actually it, part of this is a little bit sad. So Smash fans were pestering Sakurai on Twitter about mm-hmm. Waluigi uh, not being playable because mm-hmm. Waluigi was announced as an assist trophy. Mm-hmm. Um, and before I get to the part where Reggie commented, it actually was pretty bad and pretty pathetic to the point they were insulting him Ooh. and threatening to boycott and all this stuff, like just going nuts. And here's the thing. While Luigi, while I I agree with Mr. Jim Sterling that deserves respect and needs to start making more appearances and have his own game series. Well, yeah, I was going to say, or his start. Reality is, he's always been a minor side character. Maybe that's what's now. coming out in the a fall. Waluigi. A Waluigi. That's why he didn't get in Smash. He's getting his own game. Wasn't that... You heard work, it here, folks. But wouldn't you that heard it here work first. to put him in Smash to help advertise that no. new game? No. Who thinks about that? No. <laughs> who thinks about cross marketing? He's he's a he's a he's a desist trophy. He's in there. Okay. Um, Don't hate me. Anyways, so pastoring about Wild Luigi, and. By the way, don't do that kind of stuff. Like, it's one thing to tweet at him and, and make a request. Say, hey, can, don't can get, get mean. Exactly. Getting mean is not going to get you anywhere. No. Um, anyways, if anything, it's going to turn him off from doing it. Just Re- to- Anyways, Reggie was asked in an interview about it, and he, he commented on it. He said, obviously, I know about the demand for, for Waluigi. I main Waluigi. The only thing I think you can main Waluigi in is Mario Kart and Mario Tennis. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can main him in anything else. Cause I don't think you, you know, can play no, him in right, anything yeah, else. I don't know. Um, anyway, so I hope that's what he was talking about because you can't unless he unless he has a secret copy of Ultimate huh? that he can he can make all the Luigi. Um, anyways, and he said that he would pass so the request on to Sakurai because he said all character decisions are up to Sakurai. Right, they can make suggestions, mm-hmm. but Sakurai has all final say. So that's interesting just to know that that's crazy. Sakurai literally makes all the that's all crazy. the roster decisions. Period. But then again, anything that you hate or love about the roster, yell at Sakurai. <laughs> but then don't be mean about the yelling. Yes. Anyways. Um, Constructive but, but criticism. <laughs> Reggie did compare it, though, to when fans were highly demanding that himself was playable in yeah. the game, which basically tells hilarious. you the seriousness of Waluigi becoming playable is next to nothing. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So, But it hasn't stopped fans from really, really pestering him very hard. Mm-hmm. Um, now, that's that's an aside, right? Like, yeah. Fans get crazy. Yes. They used to get crazy over Ridley. Now we have Ridley. So maybe maybe the whole uproar now isn't to get Waluigi now. It's to get him next time around. Yes. Um, just like it worked for Ridley. However, however, Smash fans now have another movement happening 
Uh, this one's happening, I believe, on Twitter. I forget what the hashtag is for it. But basically, it's a movement to fix Snake's butt. It's probably in Super Smash Snake's Bros. Uh, Ultimate. Because apparently it's too flat. Now, granted, when you look at the picture, yeah, he's got a flat butt. And you look at it in the old Smash Bros. game, yeah, he's uh, he's got a little back to him. He's got some muscles, some, Baby ton- got back. Some, some intonation there. But for some reason, people had to make a make a, a try to make this trending thing happen to get it fixed. For starters, I don't think he cares about that. No. But whatever. On a scale of one to ten, how insane are Smash fans? Eleven and a half. And this is like, <laughs> I mean, they we're talking about a car- a, a, a ca- ca- cartoon ca- character's butt in a fighting game. Right. That you don't really ever You're always moving so fast yeah. you're not paying attention. Right. Until victory poses. A- until victory poses. Or or until taunts. Yeah. Like I mean, but Oh my lord! It's <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, it, it, it's it's funny. I mean, I'm not saying you don't have a right to complain about it and that you don't want it to change. It's just it's such an irrelevant thing. It is. It like, is. Like why do we yeah. have to make a movement about it? Because we like to make stupid things famous, and and so sure. Why not? Sure. Here's the thing. Um, I love Smash fans. Like I know so oh, yeah, many amazing sure. ones. But some are pretty go off the rails, and off the rails ones unfortunately make a bad reputation uh-huh. for everyone else. Because they go off the rails. Um, I they know go this about way Zelda. The rails. There's Zelda fans that go way off the rails, and they make me as a Zelda fan like look like <laughs> garbage. Nintendo fans in general, like in, fans yeah. of anything, there's yeah. always that bad, yeah. like that small minority bad. Yeah. The problem is in the Smash Bros. community, it doesn't seem like such a small minority sometimes. Yeah, it feels like like it might be half the fan base is a little. <laughs> A little bit nuts about this game. Just, hey. hmm, I mean, just a little bit. More like, power to nuts him. I was about Ninjala. Take that and crank that up to 111, <laughs> and that's what you get with a typical Smash Bros. fan. And I am one of them. I am a Smash yeah, Bros. Right. fan, no, but I'm not sure. that. Right. Like this is next and, level stuff. You get to, you get to, you get some of those where the fans are like, "Yeah, we don't own them. They are not one of us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, no, we reject like, them. Yeah. But Smash fans seem to be like. Yeah, yeah, we kind of agree, but we don't be mean, but we agree. Yeah. Like, no, I, I mean, okay. sure, I can hashtag fix fix snake's butt. Why not? It's hilarious. <laughs> but <laughs> all right, um, uh, from butts to Ubisoft, <laughs> is it an Ubisoft butt? Uh, ooh. <laughs> ooh. Uh, right. So Ubisoft has come out to say they're going to be more surprise collabs with Nintendo. Now. We know Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle came out. Mm-hmm. Seems to be a success. We don't have any sales numbers for it because Ubisoft hasn't given us any, but they did release summer DLC for it, which has mm-hmm. been fantastic. Which then generally tends to mean that it's doing fairly yeah, so well. It's, at least yeah, it's fairly gotten well. continued support. It's gotten free updates. Now mm-hmm. it's got paid DLC. Uh, and now they have Star Fox and Starlink. Mm-hmm. So what other crossovers between Nintendo and Ubisoft would you like to see moving forward? Well, it looks like they're planning I, to do one a year at this point. I, I'm all for anything in Rabbids. So, <laughs> anything, in, <laughs> anything Rabbids? in Rabbids. I know. I, I, Zelda plus Rabbids Kingdom yeah. Battle just sounds amazing. It does. Well, no, Hyrule Battle. Hyrule Battle. Sorry, yes. Hyrule Battle. Yes. Um, because the kingdom is the Mushroom Kingdom. Me. So when Hyrule, it comes to Zelda crossovers, yeah. I want Assassin's Creed. I want Hylian well, Creed right interesting. now. Interesting. Hylian Creed right now. Somehow that would inject be, Assassin's Creed into Hyrule. That just, would be interesting. Like, oh, I mean, climbing. Like, like, I think Link can already climb everything, yeah, right, but right. now it's just a different style, like, with the parkour. Don't, for, yeah, don't forget there. the, uh, don't forget the hay bales in the bottom that somehow yeah. the diving, the diving from, off of like, cliffs and landing in hay bales. 800 right? feet yeah. high, right. somehow landing in a hay wagon saves you, sure. Yeah, yep. all the stealth kills. And, yeah. Like, I, I just, it's something I've always wanted since a, that piece of fan art popped up with, like, Ezio I mean, dressed up in, like, Zelda, yeah. Zelda garb, you know, with the yeah. blades out. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Okay, yes, now. Game. Like, it's never going to happen. Oh, I shouldn't say never. You know what? They could make a custom Assassin's Creed just for Switch. Yeah. If they think Switch is, is that popular, they did it for Vita, they could do it for Switch. So you know what? I'm not going to say it can't happen. It's just if it's made specifically with a crossover in mind, it's never leaving a Nintendo platform. Because well, no, that will be part of the contract. So Right. Hey. I think the closest you're going to get is somebody's going to mod the game. To, well, yeah. That's the closest you're probably going to get. But so I'm not <laughs> saying it's never going to happen. I kept thinking, like, any other any other crossovers with Ubisoft? Um, I, can't, I can't think of any right now off the top of my head. 
It would be interesting if they found a way in Starling to incorporate Metroid as well. Yes, yeah, outer yeah, space, good yeah. little Samus action in there yeah. somehow. Even if it's Another just pilot. like a little off in the off in this all the oh crap, this the Samus? Yeah. Fighting Ridley! What is happening? Wait, what? Smash Bros. Yeah, happening yeah, right. <laughs> Um I Well it's okay. So obviously restricting ourselves to Ubisoft. Uh, it makes a lot of sense that Ubisoft's the one saying there's going to be more collabs, right. but Ubisoft isn't the only company they've been collabing with. We know about Hyrule Warriors, Fire Emblem Warriors. Right. And Nintendo's been doing more collabs. Is there any... Like, what's your dream collaboration game? You know, between an IP from this company and then an IP from Nintendo. I can already tell you one that I want. It exists technically thanks to fan modding, but I want it to be an officially supported, real built thing. Hyrule Total War. Oh, yeah. Done. It already exists as a mod of Medieval Total War 2. okay. Or is, it might just be the original. Or maybe it was Rome. I can't remember. One of them, they, they was modded for Hyrule Royal War. It is such a good fan mod that, heck, take that fan mod, up it, do what you need to do it, make it official. Like, I want this to be a real thing. They did it with Warhammer, Total War. Why not Hyrule Total War? I know it's for PC. I don't even care. Let's go. Hmm. Yeah, that's... That sounds mm. interesting. And I obviously can't tell. I like Zelda crossovers because I love Zelda games. But it doesn't have to be Zelda. Go ahead and do Fire, Fire Emblem Total War. We have a lot that too. Oh, Animal Crossing Total War. <laughs> <laughs> Animal Crossing. Get Tom Nook. An- Animal Crossing Assassin's Creed. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, God. Um, oh, God. That that would be an interesting crossover Which just one? between two Ubisoft games, just a Raymond just dance type of thing where Raymond well, leads the dancing. Oh, well, I don't know. If, oh, it was one of the rabbits. I don't think they had actually Raymond dancing in it. And they show, already did a show, Mario just dance. You gotta, way you, gotta, back you, gotta, in the day. you gotta show Raymond some love. You show him the rabbits. The well, rabbits are almost a bigger deal now than I know they are. I know they are, which I'm fine with. Uh, <laughs> so, so many people are rolling their eyes right I know, now. I know, right? How um, dare you put the rabbits over here? How about something in South Park? Because <sighs> South Park Ubisoft, references everything U- too. Ubisoft is does the South Park does games, the South yeah. Park games. Yeah, and one game already did come to Switch. Man, <laughs> like w- a, what about uh? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> what, what would be a good cross? You know what? That would be hilarious. Okay. If they could do it with Kingdom Hearts, let's. Why, why don't we get like a Nintendo World crossover with Final Fantasy? <laughs> why does it just have to be Disney? Yeah, I think Nintendo's got enough IP to almost not quite be at Disney's level, but for one game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for well, one why game, not? Why not? entering yeah. Hyrule, entering the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah. Oh. Whoa, whoa. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Entering the Lilac Galaxy. <laughs> you do that in the you do that in Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah, right. Wait. All right. Um, like I, like that would be crazy to me. I love the thing is I, I love that whole concept. That would be that would be so pretty much. cool though. Sweet that, to have like one like a Kingdom around. Hearts Nintendo version. Yeah. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. Like I just think that would just be neat. And now now Nintendo's literally building theme parks. So, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, otherwise, I mean, th- th- there's a lot of other, I mean, you know, I could see a, I could see a South Park Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Assassin's Creed would be so, <laughs> I could see that happening. Um, man, I, I, I'm, I can't believe I'm drawing such a blank. I, I'm cool with the Ubisoft ones, but like thinking of other ones, you know, I guess how Total War is a pretty good one since that, yeah. there, there is yeah. a fan mod for it. See, we already know what that could kind of look like. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The, It'd be interesting to see, like a like a Mario football game. Okay, yeah, that's like the one sport we haven't really seen, like American football, a Mario version. Yeah, I'd like to have them bring back uh, strikers. Sure, sure, but not break it this time. <laughs> I'm sorry when you can warp into the goal with the ball. Ah, come on, kind of broken. Come on, it's a it's the move. No, yeah, it's the moves. yeah. What was that one? What? Like a like a like a, a Mario football. That'd be sure. That'd be interesting. Yeah, a Mario football. I see. Here's the thing. I miss. I, I, I like the Mario. backyard games actually. Yeah. Well, you know what game's coming that we have that we haven't really spent any uh, time really ever talking about. What? Mutant League football. Oh yeah, it is oh, coming to Switch. Yeah. 
is coming to Switch with a ton of features. Yes. Like they're like going all out. And nice. There's no other football game for me to play, so you guys know I'm buying it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'd ra- I'd, it's yes, fantastic. I would rather play Madden, but if I'm not, then I'm playing Mutant League because it is very, very fun for no one who's ever played it. Like, it's, it's been out. For anyone who's never played it, it is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it's basically what NFL Blitz used to be. Yeah, yeah kind of. But with mutants and lots of death. Yes, you can actually lots kill players. And lots and lots of death. Oh, you got this stud QB. You better hope he's never touched. Yeah. Don't run. Yeah. Because they will kill you after the play. Don't worry. He'll throw you in a, <laughs> like a pot of burning acid in the middle of the field. You're like, wait, why is this here? <laughs> sure. Because it's mutant league. Because it's mutant league. It's mutant league. Don't, don't, don't question things in mutant league football. No. Man, I hope they have online matches. That will be so much fun to play right? with some of you guys. Oh, man. Especially since I, well, they have Madden on PC, so I will be playing Madden. Yeah, there you go. That'd be great. Yeah. In 4K. Oh, oh my gosh. So, like, Xbox One X people, too. Sorry, PlayStation 4, 1440p for you. Oops. That's okay. Um, It's fine. It's still. Yeah, I know. No, I know. I mean, I'm gonna, we're, we're talking about a, a Switch, like, I know. a Switch at a 720p screen. So. <laughs> I know. 1440p. Um,. Yeah, I guess that's really that's really all I got for crossovers. I mean, uh, all the comments and give me your guys' dream crossover game with any company. First with Ubisoft because that's the company that we know is going to have more crossovers, and then with other companies like I can even think of other other uh, high, you know Hyrule Warriors, Fire Emblem Warriors kind of mm-hmm. games I can want too. You know, mm-hmm. I honestly want a Mario Warriors. I think there's way so many Mario heroes, so many Mario enemies that would be really interesting to have like a Mushroom Kingdom style Warriors game. But so what, would the main enemies just be random Goombas running around, and then you have there's to bounce off of people? There's more than Goombas for enemies in Mario. No, there's not. They don't matter. <laughs> they don't matter. Koopa Troopas don't matter. No. Sorry, oh. Koopa Troopa Poopa. Oh, <laughs> but well, you got a Goomba stoop. Goomba, on your face right now. <laughs> Goomba stomp stuff, man. Goomba stomp stuff. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, I think it's going to do it this week for the Nintendo Prime podcast. I want to thank all you guys for tuning in. You can follow Mr. Eric Moore over there at emo8790. There you go. On, <laughs> on Twitter. You can follow us uh, here as well, Ninty Prime on Twitter. I do want to mention that you can obviously support us over at Patreon.com, which is a big deal for our podcast because for just $5 a month, you get early access to the audio version of the podcast at least one day. Last week was actually two days early. Um, that Don't count on that every week. It just so happened that it landed two days early. Uh, and you also can get on the podcast for $20 a month, or you can watch the podcast super, super early, literally as we're recording it live Hi, on Thursdays for $10 a month. Uh, well, technically uh, we're doing it Friday, but well, yeah, well, it doesn't matter. It's usually Thursdays, but yes. it was my birthday and there's, it actually kind of worked out yeah, better. Cause actually it was my kinda, birthday. Yeah. Um, and then I do want to mention that, uh, we now have a new uh, Discord server, and all of that is exclusive to Patreon backers or YouTube sponsors or Twitch subscribers. So if you would like to get in on that action, you have to become one of those three things, connect it to your Discord, and you will be good to go. Uh, beyond that, I don't think I have anything else nope. other than thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for helping grow this podcast and grow Nintendo Prime to what it is today. I appreciate it so, so, so much. More than you guys could ever know. And I can't wait for the last missing piece of equipment to finally be done with this camera. <laughs> I know you guys are looking like looking at this and be like, what do you mean? Things look good. I'm like, yeah, things are going okay. Just wait till you get the other camera in. And you start getting crisp 4K podcasts where you can oh, see my God. Layers. I'm going to have to like hide layers. something, aren't I? We're going to have to hire makeup artists, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to break that camera off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. What is up? That's the plan, anyways. Yes. It's actually what, really, break really. The camera? It, no, no. <laughs> it's actually really hard to stream in 4K because I think the latest version of OBS finally supports it, but it, it's been such a hard thing to get supported with these free. These free streaming things. That's why I've been looking at some of the paid ones as well, which one's good at 4K streaming. Uh, But, yeah, it's not just getting the podcast out in 4K. It's also going to change how we can angle things because right now we cannot zoom. We cannot focus. We cannot do anything. Whereas 
with the camera we have, we have choices between different types of lenses. We have different we have different zooms. We have wide angle. We can actually get in like over here and over here and crop things. Like even if we don't want to release the podcast in 4K, recording in 4K is highly, highly important because yes. when you downsample the 1080p, you get a lot of playroom there and it makes the image even more crisp. Um, so like right now you see like probably in the podcast you're seeing Eric's little left thing is probably cut off a little bit because it sucks using this camera. Yeah, Whereas the other camera, we can get like, we almost get the whole office in one shot. Yeah. So, yeah. Wide angle lenses. Wide angle lenses. Sweet <laughs> Caroline. <laughs> bah, bah, bah. You're right, we can't focus. <laughs> no, we can't focus at all. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this week's podcast. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Thank you.